and I'm here to read you a tale of woe. Well, not woe, actually. Um, it'll just come bother here, folks. Okay, uh, my name is Mike Crowder. I have written a wonderful book uh, called Wild About the Alphabet and Other Tales. Um, it's an alphabet book, but it's an animal. What? Oh, it's, oh, wrong side. Um, so anyway, it's an alphabet book, as you can see, by the clever, de cleverly delineated animals as letters. And, uh, but it's also a book about animals, and it's really quite humorous, I believe. And uh, if you'd like, I would like to read it to you. And if you want to get your doctors and nurses in and bring them in, uh, and let them hear it. I think they'll enjoy it, too. Uh, call me crazy. Or don't. So, here we go. What is the first letter of the alphabet, kids? Billy in the back there. A, right. Very good. Okay. Um, a is for alligator, which we have right here. Um, a is for aardvark, Airedale, and Akita, too. Akita's a kind of dog. Uh, the alligator lives mainly in the southeastern United States. An alligator can be 12 feet long and weigh as much as 1,000 pounds. Um, that's like six grown-ups all put together. Uh, even though the gator, as it's sometimes called, is very large, uh, I've seen pictures of them actually climbing trees and fences. Wow. Um, and I know the alligator is not actually green, it's black, but this book is in color. So there you go. B, what's the second letter? Yeah, it's B. Okay. Uh, B is for a baboon. Now, the baboon may have a face like your neighbor's dog, but it's really a monkey. Uh, the baboon lives in Africa. The baboon is the second largest monkey. Now, the biggest baboon can weigh 100 pounds, and that's more than I weighed in middle school. Uh, now, do you think that's because the baboon will eat anything? Even bugs? Bugs are Ricky. I'm just saying. And the third letter is Sally in the back. C. Very good. And C is for, we won't be you know, checking into the audience anymore here. Um, C is for catfish. Now, C is also for cheetah and coelacanth, too. Now, that's a kind of fish. Um, now, I know what you thought. I was going to write cat. But a catfish is so-called because, um, well, it kind of looks like a cat. All right, it has whiskers like a cat. Uh, the catfish will live in fresh water, salt water, and even the brackish waters, uh, which is a mixture of fresh and uh, salt waters. Uh, some catfish prefer to live in lakes and ponds, but others prefer to live in streams and rivers. You know, many people like to eat catfish. Um, I like mine with grits. D is for dolphin. Okay, now the dolphin lives in most oceans and seas. And, e and even some rivers. Most will live in warmer water and don't really like cold water. The dolphin is very smart. It can't operate machinery. But as far as animals go, it's right up there. Uh, now, this is a striped dolphin. Let's see right here. Oh, that's another page. There we go, striped dolphin, uh, which is prettier than its cousin, the bottlenose dolphin. Now, you probably thought I was going to use a bottlenose dolphin, uh, but it's gray. And this book is in color. Remember what I told you six pages ago? E is for echidna. There we go. Strange looking animal. Uh, the echidna is also, uh, e, sorry, E is also for elephant too. And the echidna is sometimes called a spiny anteater. But it isn't an anteater. Unlike an anteater, it actually eats ants. But like an anteater, it eats termites too. The mommy echidna is one of only two animals, two mammals, sorry, that lay eggs. It also keeps its newly hatched babies in a pouch, just like a marsupial, but it isn't a marsupial. Like so many strange animals, it lives in Australia. It also lives in New Zealand and New Guinea, too. Its babies are called puggles. Puggles! I can't make this up. F is for fennec. Let's 
see. There we go. Fennec. There we go. Uh, now, F is for fox, too, which is lucky because that is exactly what a fennec is. It's the smallest type of fox. The fennec lives in the Sahara Desert and other places in North Africa. Now, next to its babies, which are called kits, uh, it is the cutest animal ever. Ever. Um, a fennec is a wild animal and would not be a good pet. So, don't ask for one. I mean it. G. G is for gecko. There we go. Uh, now, G is also for giraffe and Gila monster, too. A gecko is very cute, but not really very cuddly uh, because it's, well, a lizard. Um, it can't talk either, so don't let these commercials fool you. The gecko lives on every continent except Antarctica. The gecko can live in rainforests, deserts, and cold mountain slopes. It's usually green with a really long tongue that it can use to catch its food. You know, sometimes it uses that tongue to lick its own eyeball. Now, that would be very strange in a commercial, so I would not expect to see that. Next letter is H. H is for honey badger. Now it's not a badger, and it sure ain't sweet. It's really called a rottle, and it lives in Africa, Asia, the Middle East, and India, too. It is not a nice animal, not even a little bit. It's not large, usually less than a foot tall, but it is, apparently, afraid of nothing, and it is known to fight almost any animal, even a lion. It really doesn't care. The honey badger is one of the few animals that can use tools. Now, much like the dolphin, it can't operate machinery, but it will use sticks, stones, and even logs to help make its life easier. Some kind of animal, isn't it? That's my wife's favorite picture. Okay. The letter I. Now, I is for injury, which is here. Now, I is also for ibex, too. Now, the injury is not a monkey, and it's not an ape. It's a large lemur. Like a monkey or an ape, it is a primate. The only place it lives is an island near Africa called Madagascar. The injury is quite well known as a singer. Uh, not like one you'd ever hear on the radio, but unlike most singers, it makes up its own songs. And these songs can be more than three minutes long, which is pretty good for an animal that uh, cannot read music, which it cannot. J. J is for Jerboa. The Jerboa lives in the deserts and prairies of Eastern Europe, North Africa, and in Asia. It's a rodent, like a mouse, but with really big back legs like a kangaroo. It has a really long tail, too. Uh, this helps it keep its balance so it doesn't fall flat on its face. Now, the biggest is only about six inches long with a nine-inch tail. Even so, it can jump as far as ten feet. Ten feet. And the next letter is K for kangaroo. Which also jumps around like a jaboa, but not quite. Let's find out. Uh, so, the kangaroo lives only in Australia. Uh, like so many other strange animals, it's what's known as a marsupial. Like other marsupials, a mommy kangaroo keeps its baby, called a joey, in a pouch near its tummy until the joey gets big enough to jump around. A group of kangaroos is called a mob. It's not a flash mob. Calm down. A daddy kangaroo can be six and a half feet tall and weigh over 200 pounds. Sadly, it can jump only about 30 feet. If it were as small as a jerboa, it would lose every jumping contest. The kangaroo has declined to comment. L is for lobster. L is also for yama, too. Ask your Spanish friends. Okay, so uh, many people like to eat lobster, but over 200 years ago, Around the time of the American Revolution, people only ate lobster when they couldn't find any other food to eat. Then someone said, hey, this is kind of good. 
and everyone started to eat it. Did you know lobsters turn red only when they're cooked? They're usually a grayish, greenish, brownish color, uh, but not this one. This one is a blue lobster from Maine. Remember way back when I told you this book is in color? M is for mandrel. Now, the mandrel is the largest monkey, uh, bigger than even the biggest baboon. Now, like the baboon, it eats anything, only more. Is that why it's so big or because it's so big? I don't know. Um, the daddy is very colorful, and unlike that gator, it's actually green. The daddy is way bigger than the mommy, like twice as big. It lives in Africa. Oh, um, just like the ape and the lemur, it's a primate. And other than that, I got nothing. I got nothing. Uh, N, N is for narwhal, star of the interwebs. Uh, see, N is for narwhal. Uh, the daddy narwhal has, for some as yet unknown reason, a big tooth called a tusk sticking right out of its face. Some even have two. Sadly, there are no braces big enough for a whale, even a small whale, and no one knows of any narwhal dentists. Can you imagine you put a tooth like that under your uh, pillow, the tooth fairy would need a crane to lift it. Whoa, let's get that back there. Um, the narwhal doesn't use its tusks for sword fighting. Dang it, because that would be really cool. Oops. Next letter is O. You knew that. Okay. The next letter is still O. Uh, o is for orangutan. O is also for octopus, too. Another primate? What can I say? They work cheap. Uh, first, it's an orangutan, okay? It's not an orangutan. No G on the end. So please don't say it like that. It makes my ears hurt. You may call it an orang if you like. Also, it's not a monkey. It's an ape. Uh, a monkey has a tail, but apes do not. Uh, unlike the other apes, the chimpanzee... The bonobo and the gorilla, the orangutan spends most of its life in trees. The other ones just kind of visit trees. P. Letter P. P is for pangolin. Now, you've been hearing a lot about a pangolin in the news lately. Um, if you haven't, don't ask. Okay. P is for ptarmigan and pheasant, too. Uh, the pangolin is covered in scales, and it eats ants, so it's sometimes called a scaly anteater. It is not. It's more closely related to your other neighbor's cat. I know, right? Uh, the scales are made of the same stuff as your fingernails, you, but really thick. Uh, the scales are so tough, other animals, other animals can't hurt it. I think it looks like a giant pine cone. When other animals attack it, it curls itself up into a ball. It's not a basketball, so don't try to bounce it. The next letter is, of course, Q. Q is for quail. Wait a minute, there's the quail right there. Um, there are actually only about six animals that begin with letter Q. Uh, this is one. Okay, the ra R, wait, R, R's for raccoon. Um, the raccoon lives throughout most of uh, North America, except in parts of the Rocky Mountains and the Southwest. <clears throat> Pardon me, it lives in parts of Canada, down in New Mexico, and in the northern parts of South America. Now, it may look really cute, what with its black mask and its front paws that look like little hands, but don't be fooled. It's a wild animal and could bite. If you ever see one, stay away. Um, I think the most interesting thing about the raccoon is how it will turn its back paws backwards to crawl down a tree, climb down a tree. Um, maybe to get away from that tree climbing gator. S is for salamander. 
S is for short too, but that's another story. Okay, uh, so the salamander lives all over the world, but the United States has the biggest number of different families of salamanders. The salamander may look like a lizard, but it's really an amphibian, like a frog. The biggest salamander can grow to be almost six feet long and weigh 143 pounds. That's bigger than you are. This salamander is called an axolotl, and it can breathe underwater. Um, it can also regrow lost limbs like arms and legs, parts of its heart, and even parts of its brain. Its brain! Zombies would love it. T is for toucan. There we go, T is for toucan. And T is also for a bird called a thrush, too. Now, the toucan really does have a beak this big. See that, how big that is right up there? Um, now, how does he keep his head up? Well, the beak is hollow and made of the same stuff as your fingernails. Uh, the toucan can, be, toucan can uh, be found in the rainforest of Central and South America, where it doesn't really sell cereal. Uh, so be careful if it offers you a box. It's probably a trick. Doesn't the name sound like it's be a knock knock joke to you? Let's see. Knock knock. Who's there? Toucan. Toucan who? I don't know. Maybe you could write one. You is for unicorn fish. Yet another horned animal. Um, so you is also for wakari and umbrella bird too. Now you try finding an animal that starts with you. It's harder than you think. Uh, in the real world, their horns are straight, not curved. But unicorn fish really do look like this. Uh, unicorn fish are found usually on the coral reefs in the Indian and Pacific Oceans. Obviously, unicorn fish get their name from their long horns. But just like the narwhal, they don't use them to sword fight. You know, now that I think about it, even the swordfish doesn't use its sword to sword fight. What is up with that? I'll find the page here. Okay. V. V is for viper. See that? Snake. Viper. Okay. Uh, now this, wait, wrong hand. There we go. Is a Saharan horned viper that lives in Egypt and northern Africa. It's not a very large snake. It's only about three feet long, maybe. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> another type called a pit viper can reach up to six feet long. Now, that's bigger than I am. I'm not very tall. Um, Fun-sized. Okay, a rattlesnake is a pit viper that lives in most of North America, even America, uh, all the way down into South America. There are two other American snakes, the copperhead and the moccasin, and they're pit vipers too. Now, not all snakes are vipers, but beware. Vipers are venomous. I am deadly serious. See how I did that? W is for wasp. Now, wasp, W is also for wren, too. Wren is a type of bird. The wasp lives anywhere it's not too cold. There are between 30,000 and 100,000 kinds of wasp. That's a lot of wasps. Just like a bee, the wasp has a stinger in its abdomen, the back part of its body. Unlike a bee, however, the wasp can sting you more than once. Ouch! X, the hardest letter in the alphabet to find a fish word. Fish word. Dude, uh, verb. Noun. Aminal. Okay, there we go, but not quite. Because uh, you won't believe it, but there are almost as many animals that start with X as Q. Uh, the X-ray tetras, which you see here, are my favorite. They are small fish that live in South America near the Amazon. You can see right through them. You know, you can even see their skeletons. Uh, you know, just like with an x-ray camera, which your doctors and nurses have plenty of, I'm sure. Um, and not like those old x-ray glasses you used to get in back of comic books, because um, they don't really work. Learn from my mistakes. Why? is for yak. Uh, the wild yak, there, there we go. The wild yak lives mainly in northern Tibet and in parts of China and all the way into India. 
in, in India. Uh, the yak is a hairy cousin of the cow. As a matter of fact, it's China. It's even called a hairy cow. It also is a cousin of the American buffalo or bison. But it's really more of a third cousin, twice removed. Okay, the final letter of the alphabet. Do we remember what that is? Billy in the back. There. Um, yes, it is Z. Thank you. And Z is for Zebu. I know what you're thinking. Just who is this Zebu anyway, huh? Isn't the last spot in the book way too important to be filled by some unknown? Well, you know, that's just what the zebra said. But the zebra, zebu works for less money, and it's not just black or white stripes. There might be brownish parts, too. Maybe. Although it's from India, Africa, and South Asia, the zebu is just a cow. It's a small cow with a big hump, but even with that hump, it's still less than five feet tall. It's fun-sized. Just like I was in middle school. The end. Um, so that's your alphabet. And um, I'm glad to share that with you because I know many of you didn't know it yet. Or at least Billy didn't. Um, so I'm going to sign off now and say thank you very much to Sherry and Karen for setting this whole thing up. And um, I had something else. I don't remember what it was. But you guys have a great day. And... Uh, Oh, I spent most of my uh, childhood in a hospital, so I know what you're going through. Um, just be nice to doctors and nurses, okay? All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Oh, how do I turn this thing off? Oh, there it is. <laughs> now, where's my mouse?